Greenhouse gases are atmospheric gases that play a vital role in shaping Earth's climate. These substances absorb heat and trap it in the atmosphere, acting like a protective blanket around our planet. This process is known as the greenhouse effect since it resembles the way a greenhouse nurtures plants. The greenhouse effect is essential for maintaining a suitable temperature for life on Earth. It elevates the average surface temperature by approximately 33 degrees Celsius. Without this effect, our planet would be too cold to sustain life. An excess of greenhouse gases, however, leads to global warming, which carries a host of consequences. Let's start by understanding the fundamental nature of greenhouse gases and their more common sources. In 2021, Canada's greenhouse gas emissions totaled approximately 670 megatons of carbon dioxide equivalent. To put that into perspective, consider that the average weight of a human being in North America is around 80 kilograms. The greenhouse gas emissions emitted by Canada alone surpass the weight of 8.375 billion people, exceeding the 2021 global population of 7.8 billion. The three primary greenhouse gases of concern are carbon dioxide, methane, and nitrous oxide. In Canada, carbon dioxide accounts for 80% of emissions, while methane accounts for approximately 13%, and nitrous oxide contributes around 5.2%. Other emissions include hydrofluorocarbons, fluorinated gases, sulfur hexafluoride, and nitrogen trifluoride. In nearly every industrialized country in the world, Carbon is the biggest contributor to greenhouse gas emissions. However, methane is more effective at trapping radiation and has a much greater impact on global warming over a 100-year period. And out of the three main greenhouse gases, nitrous oxide molecules have the longest atmospheric lifetime, so their warming potential is over 265 times that of an equivalent amount of carbon dioxide. The sources of greenhouse gases originate from a wide range of activities that touch our daily lives. Take transportation, for example. Every time we hop into our cars and hit the road, we're directly contributing to carbon emissions. The transportation sector is responsible for 27% of greenhouse gas emissions in Canada, and light-duty vehicles, the ones that we drive, are responsible for almost half of that total. The energy we consume in our residential communities, whether it's heating, cooling, or powering our homes, also adds to net total emissions. Another notable contributor is the agriculture sector. In 2021, it was the fifth largest source of greenhouse gas emissions overall for Canada. Domestic livestock like cows, as part of their digestive process, release methane, and the storage of manure in holding tanks can exacerbate the emissions profile of the industry. A lot of our personal choices make a significant impact as well. When we throw away organic waste like food scraps and yard trimmings without properly composting them, they decompose in landfills without oxygen, generating methane. In fact, in Canada, buried organics are responsible for 54 megatons of methane emissions, or around 62% of total methane emissions. Let's pause our discussion here to quickly talk about the water sector. It is important to note that throughout this video series, our primary focus will be on the emissions profile of the water sector, which encompasses the drinking water network, sewer network, water treatment plants, and wastewater treatment plants. These critical components of the water infrastructure can contribute up to 15% of their city's greenhouse gas emissions in several key ways. Firstly, they consume significant amounts of energy sourced from fossil fuels in order to pump water through the distribution network, run treatment processes, and manage wastewater, resulting in significant carbon dioxide emissions. Secondly, the usage of chemicals in water and wastewater treatment processes, such as coagulants and disinfectants, can indirectly contribute to greenhouse gas emissions. This is often where nitrous oxide emissions come from. Thirdly, Infrastructure leaking within the water network leads to wasted water, necessitating additional treatment and pumping, which increases the energy demands and associated emissions. Anaerobic conditions, which occur in sewer pipes and during certain stages of the wastewater treatment process, facilitate the production of methane by microorganisms, contributing to greenhouse gas emissions. Finally, Process emissions generated during various treatment processes such as aeration, digestion, and sludge handling release greenhouse gases. By understanding these contributions, 
we can explore potential strategies to mitigate and reduce the environmental impact of the water sector on global warming, which will be discussed in future videos. Now that we have a comprehensive understanding of the three main greenhouse gases, common sources, and a quick overview of the water sector's role, let's examine the stakeholders responsible for contributing to emissions on a cumulative basis. When evaluating greenhouse gas emissions by economic sector in Canada for the year 2021, we find that the oil and gas sector emerged as the largest contributor, accounting for 28% of the nation's total emissions. Following closely, transportation accounted for 22% of emissions, while building and architectural infrastructure contributed 13%. Electricity generation made up 8% of emissions, and heavy industries such as mining, smelting, and refining materials accounted for 11%. Additionally, agriculture represented 10% of emissions, and waste management and other sectors including forest resources and construction contributed 8%. Over the past few decades, we have witnessed a concerning trend in greenhouse gas emissions in Canada. From 1990 to 2021, total emissions have increased by 14%, with the most significant increase occurring within the oil and gas sector, which saw an alarming 88% rise in emissions. The transportation sector experienced a 27% increase, and agriculture experienced a 39% increase. All hope is not lost, however. Remarkably, the electricity sector experienced a 45% decrease in emissions since 1990. Similarly, heavy industry emissions have decreased by 22% and waste by 14%. This trend arises from industrial slowdown, and it is significant enough that there is a general decrease of about 8.4% in Canadian emissions from 2005 to 2021 which is equivalent to removing around 19 million gas-powered passenger vehicles from the roads for one year. So now, let's take a closer look at our greenhouse gas emissions and the strides we're making. The situation is complex, and measuring our progress can be challenging. While we've seen significant advancements in certain areas, accurately quantifying our overall progress remains tricky. At this stage, an important aspect comes into play, the distinction between direct and indirect emissions. Direct emissions refer to greenhouse gases that are released directly from a specific source. Let's take the greatest contributing sector as our example. In the context of the oil and gas industry, direct emissions primarily come from activities such as combustion of fossil fuels for energy generation, flaring, and venting. Indirect emissions, on the other hand, are not directly released from a specific source, but result from activities associated with a particular industry. They are often more difficult to quantify. For example, emissions resulting from the refining of raw materials, transportation and distribution of products, and consumption and use of products, all qualify as indirect emissions. The Greenhouse Gas Protocol provides a clear set of standards that help countries move towards climate goals, and it distinguishes between direct and indirect emissions in tiers. Scope 1 emissions refer to direct greenhouse gas emissions from sources that are owned or controlled by an organization, such as on-site combustion of fossil fuels. Scope 2 emissions are indirect emissions generated from the generation of purchased electricity, heat, or steam. Scope 3 emissions are other indirect emissions that occur as a result of an organization's activities, but are not owned or controlled by the organization, including emissions from transportation, waste disposal, and purchased goods or services. In Canada, the percentages of each scope can vary depending on the industry and organization. However, on average, Scope 1 emissions account for around 20 to 30% of total emissions. Scope 2 emissions make up approximately 5 to 15%, and Scope 3 emissions contribute to the majority, often exceeding 50% of the total emissions. All of this provides us with a solid foundation, but there's another important component missing from the puzzle. Why should we care about greenhouse gas emissions? What does it mean for our lives? As discussed earlier, more emissions leads to more greenhouse effect, which leads to global warming. This long-term increase in the planet's average surface temperature drives climate change on a global scale. 
The impacts of global warming are far-reaching and affect various aspects of our planet. Rising sea levels pose a threat to coastal communities and low-lying areas. Melting glaciers and ice sheets in polar regions contribute to this effect. Altered precipitation patterns can disrupt ecosystems and agricultural systems right in our backyards. Imagine the challenges faced by farmers when their crops don't receive the expected rainfall, affecting food production and the availability of fresh produce. Also, the absorption of excess carbon dioxide by the ocean poses a significant threat to the marine biosphere. Picture a vibrant coral reef full of colorful fish and sea creatures, now under threat due to the increasing acidity of the water. It's important to note that Canada, being located in the Northern Hemisphere, experiences climate change at a rate approximately twice the global average. The Canadian Arctic, in particular, is warming at an alarming rate, around three times faster than the global average. This poses significant risks to Northern communities and their infrastructure, as well as the unique ecosystems found in these regions. Global warming has impacts beyond environmental concerns, including health implications. Rising temperatures can lead to an increased risk of heat-related illnesses, such as heat exhaustion and heat stroke. Changing climate patterns can also influence the distribution of allergenic plants, increasing the duration and intensity of the pollen season. This can worsen allergies and respiratory conditions such as asthma, impacting the overall respiratory health of individuals. According to the World Health Organization, climate change is projected to cause approximately 250,000 additional deaths per year between 2030 and 2050. These deaths will primarily result from malnutrition, malaria, diarrhea, and heat stress. Climate change increases the risk of injury and death from extreme weather events like hurricanes, droughts, and heat waves. Between 1970 and 2021, climate change has caused approximately 11,778 reported disasters and over 2 million deaths globally, according to the World Meteorological Organization. As we wrap up our discussion today, let's reflect on the main takeaways from our exploration of greenhouse gases and climate change. Firstly, human activities are the number one contributing cause to the increasing greenhouse gas concentrations in the atmosphere, the three main ones being carbon dioxide, methane, and nitrous oxide. In Canada, the oil and gas industry emerges as the primary contributor to greenhouse gas emissions. Emissions can occur directly from specific activities or indirectly through various processes and supply chains. The accumulation of greenhouse gases on the whole intensifies the greenhouse effect, leading to global warming, a phenomenon that triggers environmental consequences ultimately causing climate change on a global scale. Climate change poses a significant threat to human lives, particularly with regards to health. It is imperative for us to fully comprehend the issue at hand and take proactive measures to mitigate the impacts of climate change. Remember, we are the stewards of our planet, and it is our responsibility to address this global challenge head-on.